Hi, I'm Geneva Long, CEO of Bolus, and today we're going to talk all about air conditioning inside RVs and specifically the air conditioner of the Bolus. Let's get started. So let's talk about, first of all, where the air conditioner is in a Bolus. On most RVs, you'll find the air conditioner on the roof. Um, and we don't do this because it severely compromises the aerodynamics as well as raises the center of gravity. And when you raise the center of gravity of an RV, it causes you to have much worse handling and therefore you need a weight equalization hitch or anti-sway bars. And so Bolus solves this problem of um, in RV design of where to put the air conditioner and how to not have it compromise the center of gravity by putting that air conditioner inside the shell. And so that means that our center of gravity is extremely low. So our handling is superb, but then it also means that we are not required to have weight equalization hitches or anti-sway. You just need that two inch ball. And having this two inch ball and no need for anti-sway or weight equalization means that you can tow with a wider range of tow vehicles as well as EVs. So that's why that's important for us. As the next stop, it's important to choose the right air conditioner for the space. So you really have to think when you're designing an RV um, of how to choose a unit that is right for the RV you're designing. Um, if you choose a unit with too much cooling power, it will cycle off too quickly, not properly removing moisture from the air and will also freeze up. So this is not a case of a bigger air conditioner is always better. Bolus has a compact, efficient floor plan, curved roof, as you can really appreciate in this view. And then we have that 6'4 interior height. Um, so this actually allows for a reduced amount of air volume inside of our RV compared to others. And our air conditioner is over specced for the volume of air inside the Bolus. Additionally, we have engineered our air conditioning system so that it can run off grid from our power management system. And I'll get more into that later. Off grid does not mean just running your air conditioner from a generator. In our case, it actually means running the air conditioner from the batteries. Now let's start with a little air conditioner education session, because I think it's easy to think that air conditioners simply work by cooling the space. And, you know, for most of us, we just really care that it gets cold. We don't really think more about it than that. Um, but that's not exactly true. So every air conditioner in the world operates using a heat transfer. So that means that as liquid refrigerant inside the evaporator coil converts to gas, heat is absorbed from the indoor air into the refrigerant. And that cools the air as it passes over the coil. The indoor air conditioner unit's blower fan then recycles that chilled air back through the RV through a filter or HEPA filter in our case. The refrigerant, now superheated vapor, reaches the condenser and is exposed to the outside air. The outside air absorbs the heat from the refrigerant, lowering the temperature of the refrigerant and changing it back from a gas into a liquid. Then, once the heat from the refrigerator is removed to the outdoors, the cold refrigerant travels back to the evaporator and repeats that process over again. The process continues until the inside temperature of your RV would reach that desired level set at the thermostat, at which point the compressor will turn off. Then as the temperature creeps back up, the compressor starts again, restarting the process. So it's important to consider both sides of that in that it's simply not cooling the space, it's transferring heat. Um, so now let's get into what Bolus does a little bit differently. So back to designing air conditioner systems for RV, it's not that simple. So Bolus does not have a soft start uh, because it doesn't need one. Now, in most RVs, you do actually need a soft start because that's startup, and, and this is how our, all large appliances work. Um, large appliances pull about six times the amount of power for a moment or so. So most RV manufacturers um, you know, could solve this by adding larger inverters that could handle that 
um, surge at the beginning, but of course, larger inverters would be more expensive. And so for that reason, in most LV RVs, you'll see soft starts. But soft starts um, are really designed when you're going to be at a campground, not when you're designed to be off grid. And so soft starts have had their issues when um, trying to design air conditioner systems for off grid use, which is why you really won't see a lot of RVs that have uh, air conditioning systems that can run off the batteries. Um, so that's a little bit about soft starts. And like I said, Bolus does not use one. And in terms of RV size, other RVs are large, <laughs> quite large. Um, I'm sure we've all, you know, been to an RV dealership once or twice and just appreciated how large they are. And the larger your RV gets, the more, um, the more air volume it's going to have. It's just really that simple. And therefore, the more cooling you're going to need to do to cool that air volume. And therefore, you're going to need a larger AC. And if you have a larger AC, you're going to need a larger inverter in order to run that off grid, if that's even possible. Um, not every RV, obviously, like I said, has that even possibility. And the type of inverter you would need to run a large RV air conditioner would be extremely expensive, which again is why you don't see that in most RVs. Um, as I mentioned before, most RVs don't even have the ability to run their air conditioner off grid. This is a unique feature to Bolus because of the investment into the right systems. Now I say right systems because it's both the air conditioning system and the Bolus power management system. It's a true holistic system design. The right air conditioner won't work off grid if you don't have the right battery system. And same thing goes, just having the right battery system doesn't mean you can throw uh, any old air conditioner in there. Um, now I should mention that Bolus has a vented air conditioning system and that's vented into uh, the three Bolus rooms. So you'll be able to see the vent from here, the living room, bathroom and bedroom. And now if you've ever heard of issues with a vented air conditioning system like we use, I just wanna mention that it's because it was designed or installed incorrectly. And this happens when the air intake and air exhaust for the heating system, the air conditioner are put too close together. Um, now we covered in our little education lesson at the beginning of that heat transfer. Um, so it's important to separate those um, and Bolus certainly does that. So the intake, for the air is gonna be on the side of the bolus and the exhaust is actually underneath the bottom of the bolus as well. So we've made, you know, again, part of this holistic design, it's important to think about where that exhaust is and where that intake is. And that's really important for designing for RV. It's also important to know that many RVs consider themselves of having off-grid air conditioning because they can just run the generator. Um, but that's not really the right approach to take to thinking about your own off grid air conditioning uses. First, you need to think about where you're wanting to go. So um, even though you can run your, your air conditioner off the generator, there's a lot of generator rules in national parks and state parks. Um, I can think of one example in Zion, I believe you're only allowed to run your air conditioner about four hours a day, and there's specific hours you have to do that. And obviously that's to um, not compromise the experience of other campers there by running the generator the whole time. Never mind yourself by running the generator the whole time as well. Um, and so the generator size is also diff very different, which I'll talk about in a second. But at Bolus, with an off-grid power package 2 on our endless highways, which has 17 kilowatt hours, you can have up to 32 hours of air conditioner from the battery. Um, and then you could also use a generator if you were looking to extend that um, air conditioning use off-grid indefinitely. And a little bit on generator sizes. So on the Bolus, the air conditioner can run off of a 15 amp, um, 50, a, a, a generator that takes 15 amp. And those are smaller generators, lighter generators, and most importantly, quiet generators. Um, so we usually suggest that Honda 2200 series um, that works well to run that air conditioning indefinitely. Whereas with other RVs, because their air conditioners um, take more power, you're not going to be able to run it with a small, quieter, lighter weight generator, you're going to need a really large, really heavy generator. Um, and those large, really heavy generators, again, take up um, 
take up, uh, create more noise. Um, so that's certainly something to consider. Um, and in terms of the hours, the 32 hours of air conditioning that I gave, it's important to think about in that you're usually not running air conditioner 24 hours a day. Um, certainly out here on the West, the temperature usually decreases overnight. So those 32 hours of air conditioning might last you um, over multiple days. Now let's talk about um, reflective surfaces. So from time to time we hear, oh, the bolus is a tin can, it must get very hot. Um, but actually, polished aluminum reflects about 95% of infrared rays that hit it. Now you're going to compare this to something. So you'll see many RV roofs with white paint on them. And white paint does reflect sunlight as well, but it reflects about 80 to 90% of sunlight. There are super white acrylic paints that are just coming to market that reflect about 95% of sunlight, but those are not yet being used on RV applications. Um, and of course, this changes as, as well when you put solar on the roof. Um, and if you choose to install solar panels badly without any airspace, and this is the way that most RV manufacturers actually do install solar panels, which is kind of shocking. Um, but if you install solar panels badly without any airspace, then they're going to heat up the RV even more, and you'll need an even larger air conditioner to make up for this. And Bolus solves this by installing all of our aerosolar with airspace. Um, so it reduces that heat transfer from the black solar panels to the bolus, thus ensuring we can cool the bolus very efficiently. It's also important to consider what insulation the RV you are purchasing has, and the bolus RV comes with a poly iso insulation, which has a much higher R value than traditional RV insulation. And I'm just going to bring you over here to show you um, that difference in insulation. So this is what the um, poly iso insulation would look like. And this is, you know, what traditional RV insulation would look like. Bolus doesn't use any of this. Um, we're just using that poly iso um, insulation. And that's why the bolus performs so well in a variety of climates, hot and cold. Now, it's an unseasonably hot day in Santa Barbara, so that's why I chose today to film this video. Um, I thought it'd be the perfect way to show what the cooling environment looks like in a bolus. And what I would say this is simulating is your first day of camping. Perhaps you've taken a long drive and you've just arrived at your campsite. The temperature in the bolus has been allowed to build over the course of the day, and now it's hot and you want your bolus cold. Um, this doesn't simulate regular camping because with regular camping at Bolus, we recommend that you turn your air conditioning on as early as possible so that it can hold the cool temperature through the day as the day gets hotter. Um, but I think this is a good experiment to show you, um, you know, what that looks like to cool down a very hot Bolus to a comfortable temperature. And what's also worth mentioning is it's the same as your house. Um, I'm sure most of you have come home after a trip to a very hot house, which takes longer time to cool down to a comfortable temperature. And obviously, conversely, if you set your thermostat to a comfortable temperature, you'll find it doesn't take as long to cool down. Um, it's really easy to compare RVs to, to automotive or to cars because they both have wheels. Um, but cars have very little air volume inside of them. Think about less than you know 5% of that in a, of an RV. So it's a much better comparison to compare the inside of a home to a, uh, an RV than a car. And just like in a home, closing window shades and skylights can help keep the interior from warming as easily. So if it's a hot day out, certainly we will recommend that. Um, so what I'm going to do is now switch over to another bolus that we have um, that I've set up outside and we will show the interior temperature and get that air conditioner started. As a standard disclaimer, air conditioning can take in many different factors for cooling. It obviously depends on, like I mentioned, if the window coverings were left open, the temperature and humidity outside, direct sun or not clean filters or not, proper settings, etc. So this is really just to show you an approximation. Let's get started. So stepping inside this bolus um, is our 
27 foot endless highways. Um, this is obviously a luxe package endless highways as well. And I have all the uh, window coverings closed and the um, skylight blinds closed for our testing and uh, thermostat on the table. So we've got 102.7 and I've got a stopwatch next to it, which I'll do once I start the air conditioning unit. Um, and I'm gonna work off of inverted power to do this air conditioning unit. So I'm just gonna turn that on and set it as low as possible, making sure that we're on cooling mode and I will put it on high fan mode just cause like I said, we're starting at 99.5 and then I will back up here and I will start my time clock. There we go. And one more thing I just wanna show as we're getting started is the touchscreen panel, which is showing you that our battery is at 94% and that our um, AC loads is about 900 watts right now. And we're back. It has been 93 minutes and we are down to 75 degrees on the table thermostat and 71 degrees here uh, using 84% or using, we were at 94, so now we're at 84. So using about 10% of the battery to cool that down yeah, we're working almost at 25 degrees now. We will check back in again shortly. And just going to show our testing um, environment today. Uh, we are on a very hot day in Santa Barbara. Uh, we've got a lot of clouds in the sky, though. It's pretty muggy and um, under uh, this tree, just so we're not bo blocking everyone else um, on the road today. Um, this is the uh, air conditioner intake valve that we talked about earlier in the video. So I'm coming back in after about, let's see, two hours, um, two hours and 13 minutes. It seems like my clock only goes up to uh, up to 99 minutes. So uh, my apologies there. But we have the thermostat at 68 degrees on the table. Um, nice and comfortable in this bolus now. So we've swung, you know, almost over 30 degrees, um, 35 degrees from where we started here. And we'll go over to the panel. We've got 68 degrees as well. And then over on the battery consumption, we're now at 79. Um, so that means that we have gone from 94 percent to 79 percent and um you know a big part of that is is obviously cooling the interior now to maintain this comfortable temperature on a hotter day would not take as much power as it did to bring down that temperature from where we started to where we're at now um obviously it's a hot day so i'm still keeping my skylight blinds covered. I've got my window shades down. And like I mentioned, there's a bunch of different factors why um, a bolus might take less or longer than this to cool down. Obviously, uh, whether you're in direct sun, partial shade, the temperature outside, the humidity, whether your air filters are clean, um, whether you have the right settings on, all of those factors. So uh, all of this to say, this is a simple um, display of our system and what it was like and how long it took to take, you know, a bolus um, that was over 100 degrees inside down to a comfortable 68 degrees and how long that took. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at bolus.com or at sales at bolus.com. Thank you so much.